Hey everyone, just recorded some Talishar gameplay today to show you guys how I feel about the Bravo v Prism matchup and just my general experience with it. Um, the aim of this video really is just to give you a realistic idea of what to expect when you're playing the Guardian versus Prism matchup against a player who kind of knows what's going on with the Prism deck and knows when to target what things and when, and has a deck that's built to be able to play against it. Um, if Bravo is built correctly, I think that the matchup is quite tough for the Prism player. Um, generally speaking, it comes down a lot to how well the opponent knows the game that you're playing. Um, and so we'll explore that in the video a bit here, but essentially what you can kind of take away from it as the Bravo opponent is, generally speaking, you want to be super aggressive in the early game. Just send every attack at face. We have a lot of non-blocks, um, and if you've got dominated on hits as well, um, those will come through for sure, so long as we don't have the fi a figment on the board yet. Um, so coming as a Bravo player, that's you what you should be taking away from it. The other thing is Genesis is the target aura. I mean, if you've got Vestige on the board, that should be relatively obvious, but if you are going to be attacking an aura, aura Genesis is 100% the one you should be attacking. Um, and you'll see this play out in the video here. Um, as the Prism player, in essence, what I'm looking for are turns in order to absolutely go off and make use of all the broken stuff that Prism can do, i.e double tome turns and double aura turns um, and we'll we'll see often that I will aim to set up a couple tomes together and might break halo for the express use of turning on tome and drawing those cards. The other thing, library feels super important in the matchup. Um, I think there was a game here where it felt like it lost me the game but that being said, I feel like the swing you get once you do play it out is worth the risk of drawing it at the wrong time. I think the matchup in general is quite swingy in that you need to draw the right cards at the right time anyway. So having the library in there is another thing that you don't want to draw at the wrong time. It doesn't really change that about the matchup. It's still quite draws dependent and things are based a lot around how your opponent draws and how it lines up with how you draw. Um, so yeah, enjoy this video. I might get some Victor gameplay up in a few days. Who knows? I've got RTNs coming up, so I'm going to mostly be focusing on those. Um, but yeah, uh, and just want to preface by saying apologies for covering up my own pit zone in this video uh, with the, the face cam. Oh, I might look into ensuring that doesn't happen in the future. But yeah, enjoy the gameplay. Alright, just got my mate on. He's been playing a lot of Bravo against me recently, and to be honest, it, this is a very tough matchup. Keeps smacking me up. Um, what seems correct is they should be going fully aggressive um, for the super early game. The only aura they really target is Genesis and maybe a passing Mirage if their hand is bad enough. But even then, if I'm on 13 and set up a Genesis, they should just keep attacking me and killing me. And that seems to be the the way they win this one. But yeah, it's I think with two good players, it's a pretty hard matchup from both sides. So I think it evens out to about 50-50-ish. But yeah, we'll see how we do. Leading with Zealous is pretty good. I think I want to risk the pummel here and put footsteps in front of this just because having this in hand is so bad. We want to be drawing as many cards as we can and just seeing more cards and saving that extra one life is really good. But we could just get outplayed here, but we'll see. Just drawing raw pummel zealous is pretty hard though. Oh, he's thinking. Alright. 
is accepted. Hammer coming in. Three here. Yeah, see, going first is super relevant in this matchup because if you can present any damage at all, it's totally fine because we don't we don't always a ha have a hand that blocks enough. Here I'm going to arsenal the tome. It's a good thing we draw a war tune here because that means we'll always have the one float to footsteps and then play out the passing mirage. Playing out the passing mirage presents pressure to them because it means that they need to either deal with it or if they ever let us have an off turn we'll be able to present so much more pressure with heralds whereas this only demands one card from their hand pay one for an action point play out the passing mirage and then tome is the best card you want in your arsenal since we got double tome here I think I'm just going to send it. Let's see what he comes in with. Spinal Crush. Dominated. So. Let's have a think. Light of Soul is an interesting factor here. Because what it allows us to do is without Halo, play off the tone. And if we hit off the top, it's just gas. If we don't, it can be really rough though, which is an important thing to recognize here. I think what I want to do, because these two pay for this, if it hits, this pays for this, and then we can just do whatever we want. We'll just use the soul trigger now. sucks that it's that good a card that we have to put in but it's still yellow still draws us the extra card so we're gonna go for that and then now this will draw three as will this one hopefully we draw another light blue card we've got a soul shield here and another tome so these two pitch for three leaving it leaving us two float which should pay for a soul shield if we want to Okay, I think I want to play out a Genesis and a Soul Shield, pitching the War Tune. Hmm, yeah, playing out the Genesis feels correct here. Uh, we're still having, because this is five... Yeah, we're still going to have to pitch an extra card if we're playing the Soul Shield. Then we'll let the Spinal Crush come in and we'll pay for it with this War Tune. Pay for the Soul Shield with this War Tune. Then send War Tune to Soul off the Genesis, draw a card, then send Goliath Erudition. Light of Soul was clutch here. Let's stack our pitch accordingly. We're about to shuffle anyway, so this never matters. And there's an option here to just send the big red herald, but I think presenting a relevant on hit is much better here. Knowing Scott though, he will send all this armor in and then keep up the aggression. And that that's how Bravo players I think should be playing. So we'll see what he does. Giving us one card maybe.
Yeah, I've got such a fridge to work through. It's pretty tough. I think what I want to do here, I think is more likely to target Genesis than passing. In which case, I have two options on my following turn. If they hit Genesis, I just pitch something to Rebirth, which presents pressure. And if not, I will just play... If they hit passing, I'll put Reprimand into Soul, draw a card, send Rebirth take a card and I've still got Genesis around. It's hard with when once you... if you haven't set up a figment it's pretty tough. So I'll pitch this. Running the E-Strikes is pretty good. Send in the Rebirth. Realistically, you want to you want to be staying alive long enough to see your key pieces. Having been through three turns now, it's pretty rough that we haven't gotten any Arc Lights or a Second Genesis or a Merciful or something, but we've still got. Passing Mirage in play, so we're still taking cards. But a lot of this matchup is waiting to see the right cards. One Zealous, one E Strike gone. Oh, got the Surge there. I'm expecting a Red Choke Slam. Nope. That's still pretty good. Because I have passing out, I think I'm more inclined to want to play out this Pierce Reality here. And I think just staying alive is better than keeping a Red Herald for that. But I think next turn he's likely going to attack the passing. Right, here's library. Rouse into hammer is pretty good. Not having something to pitch into here is really bad, actually. Knowing that this is my hand, I think I should have kept the watch in an arsenal. Because at this rate, I think I'm going to be Haloing Figment of War in order to cycle, which sucks. Yeah, rip. We'll have to use this Arc Light as our get out of jail free card and swing the game from there. Just have to survive the next turn. But yeah, this this is a pretty sucky play. I'm not getting the five cards here either. I think I just have to do this though. Yeah, not having that watch in there was crucial. Having erudition be my only. Five. Knowing him, he's got pummel here. Oh, we're alive. We just need to play this arc light at action speed. Get that library trigger. Take the 
take five down to three. Right. Genesis. There's no way to use that now. Hmm. These blue heralds are for seven. It's not quite good enough. I don't think this second Pierce reality is going to do anything for me. For triumphing. Uh, this is awkward. Mash, I think I should have just sent in the two heralds pitching the two yellows. Pitching the um, Genesis and the Cataclysm on my turn. Yeah, I'm just losing library value here. I think that was a misplay on my hand. This deck is really hard to master. Full block. Yeah, if you don't get that first figment on the board, it's real hard. Yeah, this is going to be game here. Almost turned it, but didn't quite get what I needed. Yeah, I think once you have the library down, you need to ensure you're getting that trigger as often as possible, even if it means sacrificing auras you might theoretically get on the board that can advance your game plan. Let's go again. I think two PS reality is actually where I want to be here. I think landing our first figment would be pretty good here. And setting up a defensive arsenal. Shame we use up the ponder already, but it is what it is. Dominated starstruck, we can block. We'll demand a card from them next turn. Just hammer for six here. Oh, he's got zealous. He's so skilled.
plating into Anathos makes sense. Good turn cycle. What I'm going to do here is arsenal the Passing Mirage instead of playing it. Because setting up one aura doesn't present a huge amount of pressure. But setting up a yellow with it is pretty good. Yeah, so this turn it'll be Passing Genesis, arsenal the other Genesis. Oh man, never mind. Uh, yep. That's real rough. Okay. This hand we can do something with. If they don't kill Genesis here, we're cooking. And if they do, then we can still play Tome off Halo. Yeah. So I could Halo put this into Soul. Into... If I, assuming I draw a yellow, like so long as I don't draw a red, the yellow will pay for the Tome. Which draws three. So I've got three more cards and I'll pitch two of those cards to a Genesis. Leaving one card in hand. And I can pitch two yellows, which invokes the Genesis and the Erudition. I got all, a one card hand with Soraya flipped. And then off the one card hand, I can put a card into Soul and then attack with Soraya. The, the final card I need to draw needs to be a yellow for Soraya to have go again, but I think that's our best course of action. So yeah, pitch this. Need to draw a yellow or a blue, that's fine. Uh, Prism Trigger first is fine. Um, just keep me alive. Into Tome. Into another Tome. Ooh, we could do Arc Light. So I set up Genesis. Yeah, so if my top card doesn't actually matter what my top card is, I can bring out Genesis. And Prism. Flipping our addition. And I can use the new Genesis trigger to put Watching into my soul. And swing Soraya into play Arclight. This might seem like a bit of magical Christmas land here, but it's actually not that uncommon to see this happen. Um that still pays for the arc light. It just sucks a little bit. I'm wondering if it's worth playing the war tune here. Maybe I should have grabbed a rebirth when I had the chance. Nah. One arc light to the bottom. Oh, juicy hand. Okay, if we can set up library and play the arc light, it might just be game. Zariah right, swing. We've got the passing mirage as well, so we can still present a lot of pressure here. Yeah, we'll set up library and arc light. So arc lights on the bottom. Oh, juice, juice. All right. Watching can go in. Get me that shield. 
few options here. This tome could potentially draw the arc light if we manage to get the rebirth figment onto the field. So I think I want a Soraya swing as the first thing we do. Into Goliath Erudition because we have. If this doesn't hit, we just play the tome and see what we're digging through. Haven't seen a Merciful yet, so good chance we get one of those. Should probably pitch this pretty soon. this hits I get a shield and if it's popped I just go wider oh. show me that pulverize yep footsteps pitching this probably arsenal the war tune I think I want a prism just to stay alive. So I've got Genesis out. And because I've got Genesis out, I want to. Arsenal that. Draw five. Let's see. Probably target Soraya here. I don't have Halo, so I can't shut off the turn. If I did theoretically play Ravages from hand to do the trick, it'd be pretty good. Yeah, hammer for four after this. It's a good thing we've got these spectral shields. Two shields. Genesis. Yep, makes sense. Just need to grind through this armor a little bit. Just not letting up. I've got four block and a thingy. Oh, quicken. I could take a card with War Tune. Not having the Soul for Soraya here. I think because he was presenting, like, if had I not flipped protection, he would have gone. Um, e strike into hammer at face, which threatens my Soraya anyway. This is not the kind of hand we're wanting to be drawing right now, though. Oh, he's found the perfect turn. I just have to lose me angel. That's real bad. And that just happens sometimes. Do I want to deal one extra arcane damage by playing this first? I 
I could have gotten an extra one off the shield, actually. Let's do that. Apologies. Yeah. Doesn't threaten as much, but it gets some damage in. and erudition gone. Right, just going for the aggressive route now. Got to stay alive. The figment of war deals one arcane. Which is pretty good. Rebirth, rebirth to grab erudition though is huge. Erudition very strong. Rouse. We're going to take as much of this as we can. Revealed Crippling Crush Thunderquake. So, Anathos after this, that's 13. I'm going to have to block with A card. But, if he swings Anathos at Pierce Reality, because he knows I have Erudition in hand, I would rather keep more cards. So I'll save the block for when he swings. Um, do I want Passing Mirage? I've got two on board. It's just pitch, realistically. This is a Crippling Crush. If he draws a blue unmovable, he can block this out, is the, the one issue. I think to play around that... I mean, it takes two cards from hand, and then he can't play the Crippling Crush, which is fine. If you can't play the cr Crippling Crush, we're still, still in a good spot. So I think we hang on to this. Just for pitch. Keep it for pitch after I play this. That being said, I want to pitch the second yellow. I should have blocked with this, actually. Might be the tipping point here. It's been a very tight game today. Oh, it's so glad I kept the passing mirage. Oh my god. Um Pigment of War. That deals an extra arcane. No library trigger though. Not enough soul for Cataclysm, but a huge Warchain Herald is coming through. Goes to soul. I could actually just play that. I have enough soul. I think the library trigger is super important here, though. I could just kill him, to be fair. Oh, quicken token, one damage. Um. I'll kill you, I guess. Yeah. Super close. This matchup is very, very difficult. Such a tough one. I think... I think going first is really important and just changes the entire dynamic of the matchup. I 
if you're looking at this from a prism side and trying to work out what to do as a prism player, you just got to find those turns to do the insane stuff and exploit everything insane prism can do. Um, if you're looking at this from the Bravo side, just know that Genesis is what you need to be targeting. If, if you're going to be targeting something, and most of the time you're not, you just want to race and kill them. But if you are to target an aura, Genesis is the crucial one. Um. Yeah, I'm liking this board. This reality is only really good if you have a passing mirage as well. So I think cutting that to two because it's a two block feels fine. They're just gonna hit this Genesis, but yeah, I think I would just play the figment. Going first to get the figment out. And put the Genesis into Arsenal. It's not dominated. That's fine. Bring in for 10. You can have the hand, I think. I could take 6 and send the war tune. I'll take block 6, take 4, send the war tune, take a card from their hand. It's not bad actually. Well, your addition. Sneaky, sneaky. This is going to be a lot harder. Just the one card sideboard for prison. I can just send the erudition. Take a popper from them. Keep an erudition in deck. Yeah, we're just going to pop this tome in Arsenal. Keep on waiting for the right turn. 32 life is pretty low. Might as well play this. I could have played Genesis, put the Warchin into Soul, and then if I draw a light blue card, I can play the tome. But I think that's not something you should be playing for. It's close though, and golly, this hand's real good. They will kill Genesis, but if they don't, it is pretty crazy. Oh, maybe they won't. I'm at 17. Yeah. Could save me six life. I think that's all I could realistically get from it. Right, what are we doing here? Soraya. Grab you. Pitching blues. Pitching lots of blues. Do I have a yellow? <laughs> Seven card hand. Nice. Um. Only one soul still. I wish I drew um, Merciful. Shit. Send this. Oh, I can't send that. I'm going to have to play this figment from hand in order to give my attack go again, assuming they don't pop it.
Yeah, I'm just gonna have to play this from hand. Which sucks. Passing. That's super bad. The ideal scenario here is he pops this one, but I don't think he's gonna. Well, the equipment gone though is pretty nice. Yeah, we'll flip something for um. Crikey. I think I'm just flipping ravages here to stay alive. What life am I at? Put passing Raj into Arsenal. I'm at 17. It's not too bad. And he doesn't threaten Pummel. Just gonna swing. Play out passing. Some ravages. library this turn. Nooge. Bravo. Into Crippling. Okay. We play out the Merciful and the Passing. Make it so that they have to kill me soon. Putting Blue Auras into Arsenal is super strong for this reason. You can just dump your hand before the crippling trigger and then play out the blue aura still. Fortune. Oh, the thing is arc light. That's really bad. Really, really bad. That's really, really bad. I have to discard two cards. Pitch Light of Soul to Library, I guess. Or just block, discard Library and Light of Soul, Arsenal Arclight. This is awful. Actually awful. Maybe this is... Hmm. Well, I've already just turns the game so much, but... Maybe I need to... Think about it more. Alright, so... If I hit off the top, and I just discard these two play library. Just gonna block here. Uh, getting that light of soul trigger. Let me just discard two fabled. 
I'll discard the entire cost of the deck. aggression all the time. You wouldn't pummel a zealous. Alright, so Arclight's gonna go to Soul next turn. I still have to... Oh, I'm actually just dead. No, I can't. can't do the math. So tough. Yeah. I'm one life off. Being able to... Sucks. This game is not winnable without Vestige. That's game. Oh, I could play the Merciful off the Arclight going to Sol, but it doesn't achieve anything. The game's just over. Yeah. The library has to line up on a turn that doesn't doesn't just do nothing. Where it's it's not like a Terra Sunder or a Crippling Turn, that's kind of the weakness to it. But I, I still feel like it's something that is overall going to give you a positive, positive outcome into the match. Like it's going to net you more than it loses. Yeah, just play this. I can't win without Vestige, so... is for 10 for sure pitched rounds plot with tectonic and gauntlets yeah it's pummeled it's 10 100% it's for 10 means I can't play this genesis Gotta play to my outs though. Yeah. So that was the gameplay. Over the sample size of three games we just experienced there, I only went uh, with a record of 1 2. I think against a decent caliber of Bravo who knows what the Prism player is trying to do and knows what to target at the right time, 
that I think this is the sort of win rate you should be expecting. The The matchup is very difficult from both sides, and it's a lot is determined by the draws that you have and how your draws line up with your opponent's draws. If you're looking to play this deck at a high level, you should be expecting this sort of outcome. Uh, and so you should be aware that there are games where you can just draw not what you need and you will just die. And there are also games where you will draw exactly what you need and your opponent will just die. So that's the sort of game you should be expecting when you're playing this matchup. So yeah, hopefully you got a good amount out of this video. Either you're a Prism player and you kind of un understand what you're sort of playing towards in the end game, or you're a Bravo player and you want to work out how you want to combat this deck given it's on the radar now. But yeah, hopefully you got a good amount out of this. I might have some Victor gameplay coming out soon, or I may not. We'll see if I have the time. I've got RTNs coming up, so I might just focus on that. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.